Being from a large company has huge disadvantages, but so does being in a startup. You know, anybody that's kind of been in a startup situation, it's like in some ways it's exciting and great to have your own ability to shape your own destiny, but it's also challenging because you have no scale and there's no, um, you know, everything is always about, you know, what's the next six months worth of funding gonna come from? I think in financial services, you're gonna have the same thing. I mean, I think there's, you know, people like, you know, Bank of America are not gonna go away. Um, Wells Fargo, uh, you know, they're investing in a number of uh, smaller plays and small startups. Uh, and uh, smaller organizations, and it's really a combination of sort of the large and the small and how you best um, connect the scale and sort of the massive customer base. Also the reliability and the compliance um, that you might have with a larger institution with the flexibility and autonomy that you get from smaller companies, especially financial services, because if you if you don't get the compliance right or if you don't get the sort of the risk management right, we're all in big trouble. <laughs> if you think about generational wealth, you know the old the, the oldest clients are your oldest you know generation. We spend a lot of time on G two and G three, and the problem is you've got three different types of buyers looking for three different types of things, and so you have to figure out where do you spend your capital. And where do you allocate it? And what? And we haven't bifurcated. And we're actually working on a digital strategy. As, as Bessemer is 107 years old, we're, we've got a whole digital strategy review underway right now, and trying to think about where, where do we need to go and what do we need to do to address multiple different types of clients. Um, you know, from basic things like you go to our website, can you read it on your iPhone versus the computer? Um, to you know, innovative SRI like you know, sustainable investing. Um, direct investing, you know, do we facilitate crowd, you know, all these things are questions you've got to think about. And I think you, you should talk about what you saw in your industry because I think it's either you adapt or you die or you acquire. And I think you should share some of your thoughts that we were talking about before here. Yeah, I think, uh, as I mentioned before, the rapid in, uh, implementation of technology, uh, things are changing every six months or so. So you've got to be able to keep up with that. And it's really hard to do that organically. So before I left the company, I spent the last three years trying to buy up app companies, cloud companies, startups. And to your point on uh, the acquisitions, it's very hard to take a 107, 10-year-old culture and bring in folks that want to come in in jeans and a sweater to come into the boardroom so and talk to our that. folks and say, you know, pay me $50 million. You bought my company for $400 million, and I'll stay around for another year. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, you're just sitting there going, wow, you know, be respectful to our chairman. <laughs> but, <clears throat> so, you know, we, what we were trying to do was uh, the first two acquisitions we made, we tried to integrate them, which is a complete failure. What do I mean by integrate? We tried to take the company apart and put it into the components that fit the big 110-year-old company. It didn't work. The next three the integrations or purchases, we said, we're going to leave you alone. Go run your business. You can headquarter in Seattle. You can headquarter in San Francisco. You can headquarter in Atlanta. We're going to give you targets. Check in with us. But help us change our culture. Um, so we had to learn that over the last you know, five years um, in our business. But from a technology perspective, you have to invest in innovation. We have innovation centers. Um, if you talk to an AT&T, a Verizon, a Sprint, a CenturyLink, it, we've got large staffs having to develop and looking for that next idea, that next startup. I think this is a fundamental difference between financial services and tech. So if you think about Silicon Valley, San Francisco, there's probably 10 to 15 companies that have $100 billion in cash flow. Just waiting and hovering to look at buying companies, irrespective of their revenue. Um, that is not how banks work. <coughs> banks do not you know, fundamentally hover around and go, let's go buy financial service companies that make no money. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's really is a mentality. I mean, you know, if you think about WhatsApp, they bought that for $19 billion. They had no revenue, zero. Think about Wealthfront, they make $2 million a year and have a $500 million valuation. Banks would never buy those. But I think in a new world, they're going to be forced to it because they're going to be forced to kind of say, what, what is the acquisition cost of getting maybe, you know, 50,000, 100,000 million type of millennials that I can then somehow figure out how to monetize. But it's just not how financial services think. They don't think about, wow, I know I make no revenue, but I can figure out how to monetize. 
So I think that's a really potentially big change in the market. Because the wealth front could be bought or, or betterment could be bought by a city or somebody, but they'd have to get really comfortable that they make no money. Um, because even for me, long time being in financial services, I look at those models and say, that's crazy. I mean, you make no money. Um, you've raised hundred and hundred fifty million dollars and you make two million dollars. And you can see no site where they're gonna make a lot of money. Rules of the world are in some ways becoming the financial service companies I, I because in a sense, I mean, yes. there's so much wealth yes. and so much cash that is concentrated yes. in some of those players that and they will I mean, be they buyers look for like that. Banks, right? I think right? there's a great point. So that's why is the point is that maybe Google or Apple or Amazon or something they're the buyers of those groups because they can get comfortable with you have a lot of customers and no revenue.